good afternoon gentlemen so yeah the yeah the yeah while they uh, put the slides uh, on the screen um <clears throat> today i'm going to talk about uh, uh, the user experience when uh, a user or a visitor on the d2c websites uh, is making a purchase uh there are various aspects of user experience how the user experience of opening a packaging how the user experience in in um uh, uh in terms of the customer service user experience um of the product etc etc so uh, uh, i'm mainly uh, discussing just one aspect how's the user experience how to deal with that uh, uh while a user is browsing on the website and um how to measure it uh what what are the important things uh what's the uh, data around it those are the aspects that i will address <coughs> yeah so yeah browsing to buying uh, optimizing d2c sites for speed and experience uh like i just said uh, in terms of user experience uh, i'm mainly focused on just one topic so i will keep it very simple and going to talk about some facts so browsing starts uh, and then what you know what happens uh, what's really going on when somebody is opening a website uh, uh you know uh, for a customer he is not seeing what's going behind the screen there are many many things are going on so in terms of the website uh the html the css the javascript it all loads up your media your assets images text it all loads up to to load the components uh basically your widgets uh your media files creating sections of your pages and and then a web page renders all of this process while it is going on takes some time and then when it's finally loads up a user starts to interact it does the interaction uh by clicks scrolls and hovering and once that interaction is active then it he is likely to go on the next pages or he is going to leave the website so when he goes to the next page the same thing repeats again and again as he goes through various pages and then further is that he exits the the website so with regard to this there are various aspects of technology i'm taking it very in a very simplistic approach there is a lot goes behind and there are various jargons associated with with it for instance uh, content delivery networks client side rendering server side rendering uh, easy loading lazy loading eager loading etc etc i'm not going to go into that but at the end of the day that user experience has to be turned into some measurable matrix so what are those user experience metrics these are uh, developed by google and launched in 2018 and uh, they are part of the the uh, ranking uh, criteria by google in terms of the search hence these are very important for the organic growth of the brand as we heard today in 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 various panel discussions a lot of discussion around performance marketing uh, and how it helps the brands to sell uh, selling on the uh, marketplaces etc etc so uh, end of the day uh, as mr kanan uh, who started with the uh, with the panel discussion today he also said that at some point in time the uh, you will see that the performance marketing is not working for you so one thing that you have to make sure is always working for you is at least that your browsing experience is is top notch and is working for you at all times the user metrics for those are lcp inp and cls what is lcp is basically the largest contentful paint that appears on your website for the first time inp is the measure of responsiveness for interaction and cls is a layout shift in layman terms lcp is should load in 2.5 seconds is the first thing that you see <clears throat> now the thing regarding lcp is yes 2.5 seconds but during those 2.5 seconds also how you how you display it there has to be some measure of progress while that is going on so if it is a blank screen nothing is happening 
most of the customer will will drop out in the first 2.5 seconds still so you meet, you need to have strategies for within those 2.5 seconds as well so these are the metric that means if it is more than 2.5 seconds something is terribly wrong with your website similarly measure of uh, responsiveness now obviously you all, all use mobile and and we know uh, when your mobile slows down you do not like that experience the same thing happens on a website so in order to have instant like experience ideally your inp or measure of responsiveness should be around 80 to 100 milliseconds and cls is a layout shift so sometimes you are browsing the website and when it is loading suddenly see that there was no uh, uh, cta over there and suddenly a cta appears while you click something which you don't intend to click or some animation is happening and it is very janky so that's the measurement of that so these are the three measurements through which you can control the user experience uh, on your web pages so we did some uh, uh, data collection for d2c brands for top uh, 50 d2c d2c brands by industry and page type and if you look at it though the benchmarks are 2.5 seconds 200 milliseconds and 0 0.1 you can see in various industry types that we still well above those benchmark numbers for electronics and el electrical appliances it's 3.7 seconds INP is 403 seconds so there is a lot of work to do uh, it requires that the brands are continuously measuring them improving upon them so it's not like uh, you create a website and you launch it and that one day you might have good LCP INP and CLS but over the time again they are starting to decline on the page type interestingly the product page where your sales is uh, should happen your LCP is 3.3 seconds for for many of these brands uh, this is basically an average score and INP is 340 and CLS is 0 0.16 that means there is a lot of work to do and brands should improve upon these numbers the visitor drop off per page loading time uh, so 32 percent of your visitors have dropped if your page is still loading beyond three seconds three seconds is like a magic number i would like to take a uh, you know off the topic discussion around it i'm sure uh, some of you must have seen uh, over a traffic light that somebody is selling you a book or an item do you know how they they sometimes come to you even though you haven't asked them what they do is they look at your eyes and if you're watching their product which is in their hands they come to you they have so many cars to reach out to and they have to make a split second decision who is going to purchase my you know my product that is in my hand it's very very similar to that they have few seconds to take that decision similarly when somebody a user is coming on a D2C website and he wants to make a purchase. He doesn't have much time. He's looking for his product. He wants to buy it and he wants to leave. And of course, if he's browsing and he's just, you know, having a time to to browse and and gather information about your product, etc. At that time, also he wants to uh, keep clicking and move on to the next page and next page. The information he's gathering is at a very fast pace. So you can see that 32% of the visitors are dropping, and this is this is until until 10th second basically uh, 80 80 percent of your uh, visitors have dropped almost all of them have gone i have seen personally with many brands that have interacted uh, it's very hard to explain that beyond six seconds if you're doing a digital marketing uh, advertisement and your page is loading at five seconds six seconds you're losing a lot of money in digital marketing as well so that's another aspect of a, in terms of performance marketing also you're not very uh, efficient uh, if your page is loading, you're paying money uh, uh, to Google Ads or uh, any other type of advertisement, and that page is loading where you want to have a purchase happening, and the page is loading beyond three seconds, then it's it's you're losing a lot of money because Google through Google you have to pay for more impressions, and then you have the CTA, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So your CTA scores can improve if these metrics can improve. Less than three seconds versus more than three seconds. So like I said. Uh, uh, that uh, in terms of the studies it is also found that the number of page views for a visitor is around 5.42 compared to only 3.37 beyond three seconds so that is between the fast page and a slow page that makes a lot of difference in terms of purchasing if 
the page every page every interaction is is happening uh, as per the user experience matrix then you're likely going to make more sales compared to uh, a slower page yes of course it's important to have good content marketing good product all of that so yes that that goes without saying that uh, uh, those aspects uh, are important but this is the fundamental uh, that one needs to uh, to look at some of the the uh, metrics from uh, published by google uh, for instance uh, uh, vodafone improved lcp uh, they have 8% more sales because of that uh, icook uh, improved cls by 15% uh, there was a 10% more ad revenue redbus 192% domain ranking uplift in colombia what we did as an example so in terms of the uh, 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 we did a migration for uh, Lipton Tea uh, globally, uh, where they were working on uh, uh, Adobe Experience Manager as as uh, their CMS. So the the the, uh, the aspect that I would like to talk about in this slide is that a lot of brands would like to solve this challenge through technology. So they want to have a have the best technology in place and then assume that that technology will will work for them to get the user experience they want, want in terms of the browsing. In this case, as you can see, that in 2021, Lipton T and its portfolio uh, were using Adobe Experience Manager. Now that's the number one uh, uh, CMS in the world with its suits of other services like Adobe Analytics, et cetera, et cetera. Now I'm not saying Adobe, is, Adobe as a product is, is, is bad. But the team that is working, the brand is not focusing on on day-to-day -day basis, on monthly basis, weekly basis, on on these user experience metrics. At that point in time, of course, we interacted with them and we brought a new microservices uh, headless architecture for them. You can see the performance of these figures; these are real. Uh, and post that, uh, over two years, they have a 50% jump in organic traffic. Uh, the, another aspect of this is is that while while I'm saying, uh, or you know, Google is marketing uh, this aspect as as uh, for page ranking for SEO, uh, it doesn't work in an absolute fashion. What I mean is by that is you have to look at your benchmark. So, with what kind of industry you are in, uh, uh, within that industry, within your competitor scale, what kind of uh, user experience metrics regarding browsing uh, are currently there? You must uh, target. Uh, uh, those user experience metric keeping your your competitors in mind if you want to compete so not necessarily if you have if 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 you're getting a uh, a green signal on in terms of user experience uh, so that means you are getting less than 2.5 seconds your inp is less than 200 milliseconds your cls is 0 0.1 that's not still not enough because because everybody over the last couple of years has improved upon uh, their site speed so if everybody is improving that doesn't mean just because you have you've got the green uh, uh, signal and you got uh, the coroidals are passing that means all is good no you have to co you have to still work upon it and continue to uh, get better at better at site speed so some of the discussion that happens is that we want to ha have a home page we want to have big images we want to have a lot of content on that etc etc but once you start looking into these numbers you will realize that it's not possible that you can do all of that while trying to you know achieve uh, these kind of uh, uh, performance so yeah uh, so what's what's the recommendation so uh, we should observe uh, core vitals basically user experience metric uh, uh, as a benchmarking criteria uh, rather than a ranking uh, criteria we should monitor and control uh, user experience metrics uh, on a continuous basis uh, we should ensure faster response. So, so look at these numbers literally and, and, and see where the problem is. Can we further reduce these numbers? So if your uh, uh, INP uh, for a click of a, a, a burger button in your mobile screen is 200 milliseconds, then you must try for at least 80 to 100 milliseconds. Min minimize website jank. So uh, see if, if you're uh, uh, on a 3G network, try to browse your uh, web page on a mobile and see if if the experience is smooth just like you have a top end mobile and when you're browsing it's it's everything is great similarly your website should be and if there is a jank you should investigate and find out why that is happening and provide a visual feedback and perception of progress so with that i will conclude uh, my slides 
hopefully uh, this was helpful for everyone